I think we'll be talking to Ezra about his book and debating the merits of it. The other media might not, but we will. Another thing that the media don't like to debate a lot and that you definitely can't debate on university campuses is the question of abortion. But there's a, a new pullout from Angus Reid after the, the whole Canadian Medical Association journal said, no, we shouldn't be allowing sex-selective abortion where girls get aborted just because they're girls. Well, there's a poll done, and they asked, should there be any laws restricting when a woman can have abortion? 51% said that, yes, there should be laws restricting when a woman can have an abortion. 37% said no laws. 12% didn't know what their elbow was. Or 12% were not sure. On the issue of sex-selective abortion, 60% said that there should be laws banning sex or, or restricting sex-selective abortion. 29% said no laws. Again, 11% not sure what their elbow is. Um, so you can't talk about this. We, we're not supposed to have a debate in the media. The debate's over. You definitely can't debate this on campus. Meanwhile, you can debate this. Was 9-11 an inside job? Were the Americans behind it all? Were they just after oil in Afghanistan? And isn't Iran just a nice bunch of guys? Some of the comments made yesterday at McMaster University in Hamilton by a gentleman named Safar Bangash. Here to help us figure out who this gentleman is and why we might want to pay attention to him is Tarek Fattah, one of the founders of the Muslim Canadian Congress. Tarek, I told you, I told you that I would have you on to talk about some of the people that you think we need to be concerned about. And I, I'm guessing that you think Mr. Bangash is one of them. Well, he has the right to express his opinion. The problem is that his opinion has now taken on the form where the left side of our politics uh, caters to his uh, whims and fancies. And he has el been elevated as some sort of an anti-war peace activist. When I can tell you from his writings way back when John Lennon was assassinated, uh, his magazine said, I don't have the exact word, but I can paraphrase that John Lennon deserved to die. So that's the sort of person who is accepted in our campuses, who heads the anti-war movement, uh, and who's given respectability by the NDP, by campus groups, by feminist groups, and he's a diehard supporter of the Islamic Republic of Iran and its, uh, you know, murderous regime. So. I have no problem if he speaks on campuses. I have a serious problem with our intelligentsia that have started accommodating these right-wing extremist uh, Islamist viewpoints as if they were talking to, say, the civil rights movement leaders. And uh, you now, know, now, by saying right-wing, you're not saying he's on the Stephen Harper conservative no, no, side. No, no, no. By, by, by right-wing, I meant a very fascist, Islamo-fascist approach to uh, politics. For but, example, he, but you're right, he is being accepted by, by the left, by the progressive left, uh, the anti-war movement. I believe it was the, the Hamilton Stop the War Coalition or well, a Well, he was head group. of it. He's been, uh, his mosque has been a place where many New Democrat and uh, 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 members of parliament, uh, Joe Comartin from Windsor is a regular visitor. A number of other people uh, have, uh, you know, rubbed shoulders with him. And it's one of the reasons I left the NDP when it became a very uh, um, fertile land for Canada's uh, Islamists to sneak in. Okay. And I, uh, so it, it's a very bizarre situation. I don't have a problem with these guys expressing the points of view. My fear is that the traditional elements in society that used to stand up against hate mongers and uh, people who hated Western civilization or hated democracy or uh, uh, against gender equality are now being given a platform okay. where none let, of these... Let's, Tarek, let, let, me, let me get to a couple of clips to show what these people are supporting. Here's what he had to say, and we'll get to a clip in a second. He said, Muslims have to get their own act together and unite their efforts under a single leadership, that of the leading edge of the Islamic movement, Islamic Iran, to work toward the common goals of the Ummah, the Muslim world. <laughs> Here's a clip of what he said to the audience last night on Iran. In the case of Iran, it refuses to be intimidated. It refuses to play the weak card. It refuses to be bullied by the United States or any of its allies. It insists on defending its rights. Now, we can have a debate about whether Iran's being bullied by the U.S. and allies and other countries, but this is a man that thinks Iran 
is whom all Muslims should unite behind and, and, and follow people like Ahmadinejad. Well, he has nothing to do with Iran. Uh, a whole lot of people uh, from around the non-Iranian community have been, uh, you know, what would I say, uh, his master's voice uh, for the murderous regime in Iran. What Mr. Bangash doesn't realize or recognize is that the vast majority of Iranians would have nothing to do uh, with these oppressive mullahs, that three million of them have fled, with tens of thousands have been killed. And even today, uh, there isn't a week that goes by without the mullahs of Iran hanging a few people in uh, medieval forms by hang letting them hang from bridges and trees. And this is the model that he is bringing to a university campus. Well, and I think that he wants to uh, bring into Canada as well. He wants Canadian Muslims following this. Here's, he also said last night that it's the U.S. that are terrorists, but then he started to sound like a bit of a 9-11 truther as he was saying, look, we all know why the U.S. invaded Afghanistan. Here's another clip. The Taliban has never done anything to America. I mean, you know, even the allegation that they made against those, you know, the, the hijackers of 9-11, there was not a single Afghan in that, not a single Pakistani in that. And yet they went and bombed Afghanistan beyond the Stone Age. <laughs> the allegations they made against those guys they say flew into the towers. He, he says they're in Afghanistan for the oil. It, it, does this man make any sense to you? Well, he makes a lot of sense to people who hate the United States of America, who hate Western civilization, and who, uh, after the fall of communism, uh, have been left adrift, not knowing who to hate. And so these people-starved activists, uh, millionaires mimicking misery, who go around, they've suddenly found a new ally that hates the United States of America, so they've latched on to this. Uh, I mean, uh, he's right that there were no Pakistanis involved in the 9-11 uh, uh, attack. But, but there were camps. But there were he, camps in Afghanistan yes, training people. I know, but he is on record as having said that many of the hijackers who died in the 9-11 were actually still alive. He said that. He's given respectability oh. by some of the major liberal uh, networks. He appears on a TVO, he comes on CBC, uh, he's literally, uh, uh, you know, uh, talked about by the liberal left media as if he's an intellectual. Well, he's, he's welcome to come on my show, Tarek, but I think we might challenge him a bit more than the others. Thanks so much for joining us today. Take care.